So in the last episode, I looked at the depth map feature. This is a brand new feature in DaVinci Resolve version 18, and we created a really nice little animated title sequence using it. So there's our titles, and we've got, this is from the actual project, and we've got a gymnast jumping around, but the text is always behind him. And we did that without any keyframing, any rotoscoping, any masks, anything like that. If you didn't see this episode, I suggest you go and watch it. I'll put a link to it in the description, and I'll put a link to back to this episode in that episode, so you can get back to here, if that makes sense. And it would be worth you seeing just how I got to that point. Now, what we're going to do in this episode is I want to take it a stage further. I've got quite a few comments from people saying they wished that he didn't just stay in front of the text, but when he jumped up, he goes behind the text. So I'm going to do that. So this is what we're going to end up with at the end of this episode. So let's take a look. So he's jumping through. That's as we were before. And then when he jumps up and over here, he's going to go behind the text. And I've also done a little move on that animated text as well. So let's take a look at how we did that. So this is just a pre-rendered clip so I could show you the result of what we're trying to do. And just to remind you, so as soon as he gets to this point here, he's going to go behind the text. Okay, so he's in front and behind. And this is where we were up to in the previous episode. I'm going to play that through. Now this is playing really smoothly. And the reason for that is you can see this blue line here is indicating to me that it's been cached. So it's, in, it's been rendered to cache. And to switch that on, you go to playback and you go to render cache here. And I've got it set to smart, which means DaVinci Resolve is automatically going to recognize when it needs to render something in order for me to get real-time playback. If you switch it to user, you can switch that on yourself and you can switch it off using none. Now, these clips, these are from uh, ArtGrid, so it's stock footage, but they are the format, if I just show you the metadata up here, the format of them is H.264, and the, this is obviously a duplicate of the same clip, and it's H.264. Now, H.264 is not the quickest thing in the world to render. It's, it's quite processor intensive. So what I'm going to do is use a feature called Render in Place to change these temporarily into a more uh, render friendly format. So just making it so that when we do all this keyframing with the depth map and with this animated title, they're quite render intensive. So I'm just trying to lighten the load on my computer. You could also go up to playback timeline proxy resolution and change that to half or quarter, but I think you kind of need the better resolution to see the definition of the depth map in this case. So what I'm going to do is right and click, I'm going to say render in place, and this checkbox comes up. And what I'm going to do is convert the H.264 into something more friendly, such as ProRes 422. I don't need to go 4444 or 422 HQ. 422 is absolutely perfect. And if you're on a, a PC, you might want to do it to uh, DNX HD or something like that. So let's take this. Now, what to note down here, there's three checkboxes. This has already got the effect on because I built that in the previous episode. So it's already got the depth map, which you can pick from here. And by the way, I'm in the edit page for all this because uh, the depth map is also in the color page. Now, what I can do is deselect these because otherwise it's going to bake in when I make the new 422 file, it's going to bake in the video effect. And I don't want it to bake that effect in because we're going to adjust it. So I'm going to switch that off. I'm going to switch off fusion composition. I'm going to switch off color grading effects just to be just to be sure that I'm only rendering out that individual clip there. I'm going to say render. And what it does, what's nice with render in place is it's going to create a brand new file for me. So I'm going to put that into my render folder. And it actually generates a brand new file and it automatically puts it. So there's the new file and it puts it onto the timeline for me. So it's literally replaced that clip. Now, Obviously, when you've finished all this, you want to go back to the original quality that you had. And to do that, you literally just right hand click and you say decompose to original. And because the effect is not baked in, it just reapplies it. Obviously, it's going to re-render it, but that's fine. That's, that's quite normal. I'm also going to have to do the same with the bottom layer because this is included in this composite. So I'm going to right hand click. I'm going to say render in place, ProRes 422 render and that's done. So now my machine should behave a little bit faster. Remember the depth map is an incredibly intense effect. So it's, it needs a lot of GPU. So we've got our layer on top. We've got our layer on the background. Again, this is all covered in that previous episode and I'm using this title. This is from motion VFX. So the one I'm using is called hype. It's called M title hype. And there's a link to that in the description. You can get a 15% discount with that using the code Darren15. It's, these are great titles. I'm genuinely using these in projects live at the moment, and I, I absolutely love it. So let's have a look at how we can get this guy going behind the text. 
So what I'm going to do is play through. Now you see that the render cache is happening as I play. So with Smart Render, it starts when you start playing. And what's blue is rendered already, what's red isn't. But I'm getting better performance already because these clips are now 422. Okay, I just want to find the point where he clears the front of that text. So as we go through, I'm going to go, I'm going to use my left and right arrows to go frame at a time. And we've got one, two, we've got two clean frames, which is enough to do what we need to do. So I'm going to click on here and I'm going to go into my inspector. And what you see here is we're on video, but I'm going to switch over to effects. And there you see our depth map controls. Right, so what we need to do is change our near limit and our far limit at a point where he's not on the actual text himself. So that's this point here. So I'm going to add a keyframe. To do that, just click these little diamonds here. And I'm going to add a keyframe on far limit and near limit. And this, as we covered in the previous episode, is what's controlling what you're calling background and foreground. All right, so let's put our depth map preview on. And I'm going to go one frame forward. I'm going to add another keyframe. All right, and this is going to allow me to literally over one keyframe, so it could be over as many as you need it to be, but over one keyframe, we're going to change those parameters. So what I need to do is I need this to be black, not white. Okay, and that way he will be behind the text. So I'm going to bring my near limit forward. And that's knocking that out there quite happily. And then I'm just going to go forward. So what I'm going to do now is just check by going forward a little bit that it has covered the whole thing. And there you just see a little bit coming through. So this won't be completely clean of the title. So I'm going to adjust my far limit here. I'm going to go back to the previous keyframe. So there's my active keyframe. I'm just going to push that up a little bit more. And then I'm going to check again. So let's go through. And yeah, we're now clear. So everything that's black means he'll be sitting behind the title. So I'm going to take my depth map preview off. We're on faster mode to enable us to uh, not work at best quality, but allow us to work a little bit faster just while we're setting this up. And when you finish, you can switch that onto better mode. So let's have a look now at what happens here. So we're going to play through. The render cache is still happening. So you can see how intensive this, this uh, particular effect is. But there you see at that particular keyframe, he goes behind. So that's perfect. So we've got in front and behind. So that's done. So that looks great. So I'm really pleased with that. So I'm just going to add a marker now onto the title. So I'm going to click on the title here. I'm going to press M for marker. And that is the exact point where we did this keyframe work, OK? So I just got that marked on the timeline so I know where it is. So what I want to do now to make this look a bit more realistic is I'm going to do this. So we go to here. You see that as he jumps over, the text is actually moving. So we want to animate the text a little bit so it looks like he's jumping over a moving text. So just before I show you that, I just want to take one minute to say a huge thank you. You're all absolute legends. You've got me to 40,000 subscribers in under two years. And not only that, it actually happened on my birthday. So that was the best birthday present I could ever wish for. I really am grateful. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscription. It'll only encourage me to do more YouTube episodes. I, I honestly don't know what to say. I'm absolutely blown away. So thank you all so much. So to animate this title, I need to click on the title itself. I'm going to just push back a few frames. OK, and now what I needed to do was click on the title. So I'm going to click on it here. And when we make some changes, if I move my playhead to another point to add another keyframe, what it does is it deactivates the title here and it activates the top track here. And the reason for that is because I've got a certain mode switched on, which I now want to switch off. And that mode is on timeline and it's called Selection Follows Playhead. And what that means is wherever the playhead is, it will select that clip. So because I moved over here, it's looking at the topmost track and it's going to select it. So I'm going to switch that off. I'm going to timeline, deselect Selection Follows Playhead. Now when I click my titler, it stays activated. And I want it activated because I'm going to do keyframing on it. And I don't want to accidentally keyframe this one, which is what would happen if that one was active. So let's go back a few frames. I'm just using my JKL keys. And what I can do with these motion VFX titles, they're, they're sort of auto animate, which you can control, but you've got individual control over each uh, title. So I've effectively got three titles in here, there's three words. So I've got the word pursue, and I've got scaling on here. So scaling is what we're gonna use in order to create our movement. So I've got that word, and then I've got this one, which is dreams, which has got a separate amount of scale in it. And I've got another one down here, which is the word your. 
And again, I've got a different amount of scaling on that. So it's gonna be quite hard for me. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to set the letters up exactly how I wanted them in size. So it's hard for me to actually keep them proportional and move. But what I could do is use these content controls up here. So this one is an overall uh, scaling of the three parameters that I've got below it. Now I'm not gonna do it in that because this, uh, you might not be using these particular animated titles. So I'm gonna do it in a more traditional manner. And that is just by going to settings. And then we've got our traditional zoom tools, okay? So I've gone to the point where I want to start the animated text. I'm gonna put a keyframe. I could zoom, I could change the positioning as well, and any, any of these parameters you want. And then I'm gonna go past the point where he's going behind it. And at this point here, I'm gonna add another keyframe and that will be our zoom point. So what I'm gonna do is adjust my zoom. Okay, and that is now zooming from the first keyframe I made to the second keyframe. So let's have a look at that. It's gonna try and play it back. Remember, we're now in ProRes and not H.264, so the rendering will be a lot quicker but it is still slow. So there you go, it's jumping over and the text is animating forward. Now what I need to do is double check my, that because I've zoomed, that he's still clearing it, that we've got those two frames that we needed on this layer. We needed those two frames to change the depth map settings. So let's just see if at the marker point, he's still clear of the title. And he is just, so let's just go one more frame forward Okay, I think we'd get away with that just about. It couldn't be much tighter than that if I tried. So that's gonna work for me. Now, what I want to also do, I'm gonna to go to my first keyframe, and instead of it just moving linearly, I want to do it with uh, what's called ease in, ease out. So it just gives it a little bit more dynamism. So I'm gonna right hand click on that keyframe and just say ease out, and I'm gonna click on the next keyframe using this arrow. And I'm gonna right click on the, on the red dot, and I'm gonna say ease in. So I've now got an ease in, ease out. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so it's hard to see until it's rendered, but I'm just gonna play it back a few times. I'm trying to get this bar to go blue. And now we should be good. And there we go. Now we could have used dynamic zoom, which allows you to automatically do that movement without having to use keyframes, but it would have affected the entire title. So it would have, it would have affected this entire duration. And I just wanted it to move as he's jumping over it. So let's have a look at the final thing. It says our text, gymnast comes in over the top of the title, title comes forward and we've got a really nice title sequence there. So that is so easy to do because of the depth map function. So all that's left to do now is convert that footage back to its original quality. So I'm gonna right hand click and say decompose to original. I'm gonna take this one here, right hand click, decompose to original. The effect is still sitting on top. So all my new keyframing that I did will now be applied to the original H.264 file. And we've just got to render that out and we're done. Right, so I've just thought of a much simpler way of doing the depth map control than what I've been doing using keyframes because all I've got to do is stop the depth map happening at that point because it's literally text on top of the gymnast. So all I've got to do is go to the point where I want the depth map to stop. Effectively, the text will be in front of the gymnast. Pull that layer back because that's the one with the depth map effect on it. Done. Don't know why I didn't think of that earlier. Sometimes you can overthink these things. However, that did give me an opportunity to show you how to keyframe in the depth map tool and probably show you a few more of the, of the tools in there as well. Look after yourselves. Hi, Lucy. Yeah, I can't wait to go on holiday either. Listen, I'm just recording a YouTube at the minute. Okay, yeah, can we talk about this later? It'd, it'd be about 30 degrees. Can we talk about this later? I'm just trying to do a YouTube. Listen, I've, I've got to go. All right, yeah, I can't wait either. All right, love you, bye.